they are victims, but we tell them that they don't need to be victims, they can be victorious. My name is Will and this is Olia. We are professional filmmakers who jumped on a sailboat and are exploring the globe in search of inspiring stories and people along the way. We hope you enjoy this series and if so, tap the subscribe button so you can follow our adventure. We are currently in Rio Dulce, Guatemala. We put Bonita on the hard to do a few projects, mainly to fix the leak, give her a new paint job and replace the rigging. Also, Will decided to build a shelf for all our camera gear. You'll go to have lunch because you deserve to have lunch. Tell me, are you proud of this? I, I'm pretty proud of what I did, but you're kind of, you kind of made a mess over here, Olya. Oh, yeah. What, are you gonna try to pin that on me? Yeah, right, who would believe you? <laughs> That's why I'm leaving. I can't handle your bad horsemanship. What a fail. But somehow, I was stuck on the idea to create something with my own hands. Looking back, I wish I had shared my big ideas with Will so that he could stop me right away. Okay, so behind me is a kitchen which looks kind of alright, but if you look closer, really gross. Today, Will is not on the boat, and I decided I'm going to destroy everything, so then he can't say, no, it's not to do kitchen. I don't know anything about renovation, but why not to start to learn now? Are you ready? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> like only a day or two I left you by yourself. <laughs> this is insane. It's like a rat's nest. And like <laughs> And that's how our renovation started. We will tell you all about it in the next episode, but for now, we have a very special story. Rio Dulce is a very small place, but it attracts an incredible sailing community. People sail here from all over the world and spend at least four to five months during the hurricane season. As you might know, Guatemala is one of the poorest countries in Central America. More than 50% of the population are living under the poverty line. So, a lot of sailors who come here volunteer in different ways. We cross paths with a few of them. The first on the list were Bill and Joanne. How are you? Good to see you. Good morning. Good How are you, Will? Good morning. Good to see you. Welcome. They're basically like cruiser royalty here in the Rio. It's hard to come by someone who doesn't know them one way or another. We're aboard the uh, Trimaran Ultra. I didn't have enough money, could not find a bank or family to loan me the money, so I built a boat myself. It took four and a half years, which is relatively fast, and it's kind of unusual. It's uh, 53 foot long, 26 foot wide, which is quite a large vessel. Uh, we've been on board the boat 14 years. We've sailed all through the entire Caribbean. And then just everywhere we've been with Ultra, we just continue to do projects. We never try to change their culture. We always try to respect um, the way they cook, the way they live, the way they raise their children, the way they do everything that they do. You know, uh, they, we ask them how we can help them. We love different cultures. We've always loved this, always adapted to whatever's going on. People tell us, oh, you can't do that. That's impossible because those people aren't going to accept you or there's a different language or it's dangerous, whatever. And we've never had an issue with this. You know, we watch our backs. But also, if you live that way, we wouldn't be out here either. If we believed all these scary things and this and that, we would never be out sailing either. So we always just go for it everywhere. A 
Okay, so here we are in this beautiful home here with our friends, and they recently had a big flood here in Rio Dulce. They had two feet of water in this home inside the house. So all of this, everything that you see, either had water on it or was up in the rafters. We helped them by building new beds for them, we gave them dry clothing, gave them food, and gave them fresh water. The way that you help them to empower themselves, help themselves, and also, um, you know, move forward, and they all um, are appreciative, but we're appreciative that we were part of uh, the magic. This is uh, Sophia. Sophia lives here. She's one of the three daughters, and so she helps a lot. For example, she measured every one of these holes. They're three inches apart. She measured them from here to here. We drew a line, and then she drilled every hole, and she threaded this entire bit. We don't speak uh, Spanish or Quechi, but she and I communicate. She's a darling. She's great. Share yourself, give your time, have fun with everybody, and um, let them know that you're here to have fun. You have that magical moment of being together because it can happen anywhere around the globe. So um, it can be through art, it can be through teaching, it can be through um, giving, it can be through whatever, whatever the project is. So I think um, in the end, just sharing your time um, is the most important thing I think that we think about with this community because it takes a lot of time. But in the end, um, that's why we do it. We can all help and make the world a better place. It sounds so cliche, but it's true. Live in the moment and share this moment with others. Sometimes we forget how powerful this sentiment can be. Thanks Joanne and Bill for this reminder. For the next story, we're going to the jungle, to a hotel called Boutique and it's my favorite place here in Rio Dulce. This is Pam and Sheldon. They sailed here four years ago and immediately were touched by the Guatemalan people. Having done some mission work in the past, they felt like they could be helpful here. They decided to open up a small hotel, which became successful in very little time. The goal with Boutique is to build a sustainable business for Guatemalans run by Guatemalans. Whilst overseeing Boutique's day to day, they also split their energy and time in a very special place just a few hours north. And one day, they took us with them. Right now, we're going into Pop Tune and we're going to meet up with some of our friends and um, some of the girls from the local women's shelter. Girls in um, ICOM, the shelter, who are 11 to 18 year olds. Um, they're sexual abuse victims. Often they come pregnant or come with small children that are usually products of the abuse. Well, each of them um, are survivors and you'll see you're just going to love them. They're um, full of joy, full of resilience and um, strength. And we just want to come alongside them and foster that. And we just love being with them. Pam was right. From the first minute, you feel this warm energy from the girls, and knowing the background, you understand how strong they are. You hear the stories and you think, it cannot be possible. Well, it does. Stepfather was abusing her since she was seven, eight. At nine, she got pregnant, and they continue on the abuse. By age 11, she was pregnant again, and she was also being sold to the unthinkable people. And we were uh, be able to take a stand for that. The guy that was prostituting her is in prison now for 120 something years, charges. And uh, you hear this over and over. And uh, they shouldn't be going through all these uh, situations. 
So here we come and Casna Ogara I come and bring them in and help with the restoration and education and walk them through a new walk of life. We visited the farm, which is not too far away from the shelter. The girls come here and spend time, which is a great way to clear their heads. They get to be in touch with nature. And something common about working, that everything else you're doing out there in the world, when you get over here and you start working with your flowers, working with your plants, you forget about that world. And uh, it's something magical about be able to harvest your own food. The main reason for coming here is to put a spotlight on the programs Pam is putting in place to help these girls replace bad memories with good ones. In addition, Pam and Sheldon are helping to create sustainable solutions that the girls can turn into businesses when they turn 18 and must leave the shelter. As we've been working at creating products with the girls, again, this is our sustainability side, and we brought in some sewing teachers to teach them how to create and make products. And our store, which is right behind me, and in there we are selling products that they create, Guatemalan made, that we can sell for, for them, and just help them with raising money through their abilities. And we feel like that's so sustainable because they can create their own little businesses. It doesn't have to be sold here. Wendy, wow! In? Wow. So? Here. Para mi amiga. See? Here for the camera. Wow. Wow, it's 40. So they did 40 of these. And this is a really big deal. To help these girls, it requires a team effort. But there is one person who really drives the program forward. It's Mama Connie. And it's just so special to see how she runs this home because she is strong, she's strict, she runs a tight ship. But when nobody is watching, she is on her hands and knees and she's feeding the babies. Her story really tells of the power of second chances. Mama Connie had a lot of trauma in her background. Um, I believe as early as six years old, she was a victim of sexual abuse within her family and that carried on for her um, childhood into her youth. And she ended up turning to a life of crime and violence. She was very heavily involved in gangs, but something got a hold of her and about 12 years ago, she changed her complete, complete view on life and um, grasped, I would say, her true purpose, which was from um, a life of crime to a life of helping women. And so she knows how important it is to stand up for these girls and to have someone to fight for them. And I know she feels like she had nobody to fight for her. So she really goes to battle within these courts for these girls. Um, just protection against their abusers and making sure that there is justice. If there's one thing I've learned in Guatemala just through our staff and the people we work with is that some of the most incredible people have redemption stories. Um, they have come from a really tough place and they made a choice to not let that define the rest of their lives but to make that change. And yeah, there's just a lot of examples here of people going from a really hard place to a place, not only a good place, but an incredible place and turning around their lives. And we love those redemption stories. So is Jennifer? Juan Carlos. <laughs> Jennifer is 14 and uh, she's about to give birth. We expect it any time now. So the baby shower set up is for her. And she's feeling really excited because it was a real surprise for her. Aww. They are victims, but we tell them that they don't need to be victims, they can be victorious.
when they come out of the fear and insecurity, they come out to be uh, pretty powerful women. And uh, you can see the love, the shower of love on, on this young lady and the baby shower today. That is a real deal breaker on failure because now she knows she's loved and she's appreciated and, uh, and she's encouraged. So her tears were fear and now her tears of a pure joy and love. It's such a strong team, and the three of them truly believe it was their destiny to meet each other. But for us, it's just more proof of Joanne's words, that together, we can make this world better. You know, at the end of the day is those connections that we make with human beings are really the only thing eternal. And you know, the only thing that is going to last um, through love, obviously, and harmony, and through, um, you know, just how we, how we all work together. And we believe that's the way that we can leave a mark. Like that's true sustainability because we believe that will take us into eternity. Mm -hmm.